thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet, out once again on a walk in the New Forest. Now today we'll be exploring the site of what was once known as RAF Holmesley South, a World War II airfield. It's located about halfway between Burley and Bransgore in the south of Hampshire. So along the way, as well as it being a good dog walk for Logan, we'll be investigating and seeing if we can find any evidence of its former use as a World War II airfield. So do join us. Logan, are you ready? He's ready. Let's go. Before we start our walk, I thought I'd come over here on the western side of the airfield site and pay my respects to the memorial that's here. And you can see what a what an impressive memorial it is as well. It was dedicated on the 16th of August 2002, uh, designed and constructed by the Friends of the New Forest Airfields and as you can see it commemorates the 12 airfields that were in existence during the Second World War across the New Forest and it's poignant to think that nine of those airfields were actually built uh, during the Second World War. I believe there is an annual service of remembrance of, of, of sorts that's held here every summer and then just panning around there's a few memorial plaques up against the the railings and then just looking at the front of the memorial area there's this magnificent stone carving map which gives the location of all the airfields that were in the new forest and a lovely scene of some ponies in the morning sunshine behind. Okay I thought I'd show you that so we're now going to go to the car park and start investigating in our walk. Well we've parked the car up at the Holmesley Walk Forestry Commission car park we're now going to do some uh, walking on, on the airfield site itself better tell you a little bit a bit about the history of it it was or well, construction started in the winter of 1941-1942 it was a pretty good location for an airfield to be honest uh, close to the A35 road railway station nearby the area is flat fairly fog free so they built three runways the longest one was 1800 meters and the other two were 1300 and 1200 meters and they were built at 60 degree angles to each other so it looks like a, a large letter A if you're looking from above. Unfortunately there's nothing left of the runways now apart from a, a couple of sections most of it was ripped up in the 1970s and probably used as rubble for, for motorways. And anyway we're now going to head north of the site and see what we can find. Well we just made our way to the north of the site and I was trying to find the Battle Command HQ. It's, take, it's taking me a good 15 minutes to find it but we got there in the end and it's just uh, behind me. Actually it looks like a little bit of um, corrugated iron. I wonder if that's back from the 80 years ago. But anyway what I was looking for was this is a little bit of concrete and if I move round here this is the yeah this is the old escape hatch from the command HQ it's all that has remained the rest of the bunker has been uh, backfilled and, and completely filled in but uh, the idea behind this it's slightly away from the main airfield and there was always a worry that say the Germans would, would come and land their gliders on the airfield and take over the site and if that did happen then this would be a good bunker from which to coordinate the uh, the defence from. 
but uh, it's slightly raised. But uh, so it was tricky to find, and it's a shame that something like this is just gradually becoming overgrown. In fact, I think that's something about some of these disused World War II airfields that is, it is a real shame. You go around the countryside, you see castles that obviously there were for some sort of defence that have lasted centuries. And yet some of these RAF uh, World War II airfields, they were just as important in the defence of this country. And yet so many of them have just vanished. on the northern side of the site and we're following a track as you can see here a little bridge over a stream and this is the track to the bomb store area uh, I'm not going to find too much evidence the actual bomb store itself I saw a few bits of concrete but that was about it and bomb stores were uh, always kept well away from the remainder of the airfield for for obvious reasons. So a little bit more about the, um, the airfield itself. It was uh, officially opened in September 1942 and in October 1942 taken over by RAF Coastal Command and their role was very much the uh, protection of shipping against German submarines and they were assisted by the United States Air Force with their liberators. Well, let me just pan you round so you can see part of the lovely walk that we're on at the moment. And a little bit more, in 1943, uh, glider training took place in the area for missions to North Africa. And there's a, a terrific story uh, about uh, an operation that was called Operation Beggar, uh, which involved Halifax aircraft towing gliders around the coast of Portugal and Spain and then another 2,000 miles across North Africa to uh, Tunisia. But, uh, I think to, to shorten the journey they eventually decided to start from Cornwall but uh, apparently losses were quite high so uh, it was an idea that didn't hang around for too long. made our way out onto where the main airfield was itself and having this lovely walk down what was the main runway. I'll turn around so that you can see. I say obviously all the the runway itself was taken up many years ago but you can clearly see where it was originally and from time to time you come across evidence of where the runway lighting used to be. Now apologies for my shadow that's going to be in screen. But there we go. I think this was called DREM lighting after um, experiments were done at the DREM airfield in Scotland. And the idea is that the lights are flushed to the ground in case they get run over. But, uh, and all along the side of the airfield was the perimeter track and a little bit of it is, is still there and now there's a campsite where uh, a number of the dispersal areas were. So let's just carry on walking down here. As I say, due to the close proximity to the coast, this um, airfield was regularly used by aircraft from other bases returning who'd hit problems having done missions in, in France. And it was actually, 
it's quite dangerously close to RAF Bewley where I've done another video because apparently the takeoff and landing circuits could often overlap but anyway a bit more history about the uh, the site in 1944 the airfield came under command of Allied Tactical Air Force in preparation for D-Day and it became home to RAF Hawker Typhoons Canadian Mosquitoes and Polish Mustangs I'm pleased to say they've got a little information board set up this is right by the entrance to the the campsite on the north of the airfield have a quick look round and there we go if you can see it I'll do a, I'll try and get a picture up on screen but I was reading a book called The Holmesley Story by a chap called Leslie White. Apparently he stated that not one German attack was ever made on the airfield, which um, I thought was quite extraordinary, really. Okay, well, we're going to carry on our little wander. We're heading west. So back to the runway, yeah. July 1944, uh, United States Air Force marauder bombers they were based here mainly for support missions to to france but by the end of 1944 it returned to raf transport command ferrying equipment to uh, africa and the far east and then the airfield closed in 1946 and in 1947 it was handed back to the local council uh, the Nissa and huts were used to help housing shortage. In fact, the area was known as Tin Town for a while. And the last inhabitants didn't leave until the early 1960s. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what this is. I think that it could be a base for something known as a cloud height spotlight. What do you reckon, Logan? He's not too sure. So you would have had this giant searchlight that would have been um, shone up into the clouds and by using some triangular system you'd be able to work out the height of the clouds i think that's what it is or a base for one but if anyone's got any ideas do put a comment well we're now on the south side of the airfield you can probably hear a quite a busy road just behind us and i found evidence of where some of the aircraft dispersal bays were in fact if i just turn the camera around we can find, yeah, there we go, there's a, a ring that would be used to tie the aircraft down. And I think, yeah, there's another one. Another one. Another one over there. In fact, I think there's about four of them floating around. You can have a look, Logan. What do you reckon? Well, near the end of uh, the walk now. Logan stopped off to have some blackberries. Uh, I did mean to say a lot of the accommodation buildings and huts were located about a mile away to the southwest of the site. Uh, before I came on the walk here I had a little drive round and if you do come to the area have a look at uh, Harrow Road I think it was called. If you go down that road just look into the woods on either side you'll come across some bomb blast shelters that are in good condition. I'll put some pictures up. But it's a lovely place to come for a walk, all open. It's from Forestry Commission land now on behalf of the Crown. And uh, on a beautiful day like today, 2nd of October, the sun's out. It's a beautiful place to be. Well, we've come to the end of our walk, folks. 
We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe and hopefully you'll be able to join us on another walk sometime in the New Forest in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching and cheerio and we'll leave you with the poignant view of the memorial.